I'm here with my mate Ian Davies and Ian has got this wonderful collection of old snake bite kits, uh, old treatments which uh, certainly everything you see on this video you just wouldn't do today, uh, especially not here in Australia but these have got some very interesting uh, methods of first aid. Yeah, one of the most common ones are these plastic ones that come out in about the 50s and 60s I think. So they basically had different compartments when you open them up. In one end we had the, the blade or knife, lancet, which you use for cutting the bite site to make it bleed, to suck the venom out. In the other side we had the first aid instructions rolled up there, which basically told us all about the procedure, how to do it. And then in the little compartment right in the middle, when we open that up, we have Condi's crystals inside, okay. which was used to clean the bite site. Yeah, well they came in different colours, okay. see there, also different shapes. Uh, basically the same principle, instructions in one end and the lancet in the other. The lancets were usually a different uh, shape. Yeah. That would have been an interesting one to use. A nasty bucket. Yeah, and then uh, as they got a bit earlier in time. So this is like 50s, 60s? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then from there they went to steel. Okay. So you're looking at That's this like type bullet, of thing. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much the same thing. Common these crystals in one end and a lancet or blade in the other. Okay. Some of them had their names engraved on them where they were made and a little bit which helps when you're trying to track them down. Okay. Yeah, designed for people just to keep in their pocket I suppose. Okay. And they even had little little uh, vials here inside for iodine for cleaning the bite sites. Okay, yeah. Which was another part of some kits. Okay. Neat little things. Yeah, yeah craftsmanship is pretty good. And then once we go earlier again we start to go into timber kits. So you're sort of looking at all sorts of different shapes and sizes again. Still the same principle. And a lot of craftsmanship in this. Yeah, putting yeah. threads on the timber. Yeah. And got to say whether they were the shape of bullets. Bullet shape ones. Yeah, so they could, could be kept in a uh, bullet holder oh, like okay. for the military. So they could slide them in with their bullets. Yeah, that looks deadly, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's about half an inch deep, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to hit an artery, would you? No. So how, how actually sharp? You'd think they would, would have been fairly. So the actual instructions on these things is to lance the wound. That's right. And then try and suck it out somehow. Suck the poison out, spit it out, um. then apply the Condi's crystals and then a tourniquet. Okay. There's the system. So yeah. So these, these, these are just uh, fancy little mini knives really, aren't they? they fancy are. scalpels. Yeah. Though the bullet shaped thing's pretty handy, I guess, if you got a bullet belt yeah. in the military. It would have been. Would have been handy just to be able to keep it. Yeah, like and I hope you never have to use it. Yeah. I suppose a lot of the people in those days would have just used a boot lace or a bit of rope as a tourniquet or something similar. Yeah, yeah. But there was actually commercial tourniquets sort of available. Oh, okay, this is a tourniquet. Uh, yeah, all different, mainly just a rubber. Okay. Some of them were a, a rubber tubing, others were a rubber strip. Looks like something that a heroin addict would use. Yeah. And that was to cut the circulation off. Yeah, and push down where I was going to break so we'll Read the old method. So, so which, what era are we looking at here, do you think? These, these tourniquets, they, that one looks pretty modern. Yeah. Yes, um, so, I think they were a bit older. Some of the old kits, these ones had those tubular tourniquets in them. So once again, from the 50s, sort of 60s. 
Elastic around to lock it into place. Lock it in place, wind it up a bit. No. Cut off your circulation. But I think the the circulation method's been used for oh, right down to the late eighteen hundreds. It was being used. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what they do in America now. Whether they still do that. No. I don't know. They have the they have the cut and suction thing still. Yeah. Well, it was dangerous to suck the poison out, they found out later, wasn't it? Because if you had ulcers <coughs> in your mouth or yeah. holes in your tooth, the venom could enter your system via those areas. But these plastic ones also came in a kit, like this. Okay. And some of them, for some reason, had two, two kits in them. I mean, there's a yellow one again. Yeah. It's, uh, I think this one here. Yeah, it's got two snake bite kits in it now. Why you'd want two in there, I have no idea. But okay. Give me a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> so you got some plungers for the sucking. Yeah, these were another setup. I think these ones were a bit earlier, but they were a plunger style setup for sucking the poison out for bite. Yeah. And creates a vacuum. I think I read on the instructions that you put a bit of um, antiseptic stuff there to help with the suction. And oh, yeah, right. Yeah, and some of them were plain, looks like alloy, doesn't it? Mm. And then some of them were oil, anodized. That's nice. Pretty colours. That's quite a collection, eh? Yeah, and then sort of uh, to show you one of the kits that those style of plungers we're in. This is a an early one called Day Spring from Queensland. The tourniquet, the oh, plunger, yeah. a razor blade for cutting the bite side. So that's in the side, yeah. yeah. It's tucked in the side here. Oh yeah, the razor blade, ouch. Yeah, it's got some smelling salts and some oh, antiseptic. For, for shock only it says there and the antiseptic. Yeah, a couple of little band-aids to put over the bite side. <laughs> And a little set of instructions here on what to do. Yeah, which would have been handy, I suppose, for the day, because like most first aid procedures, you sort of, it's hard to remember what, yeah. what you're supposed to do, so yeah, it was handy to have the instructions. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so those kits were a bit more involved than the basic little ones. Another kit in a tin, this one was from Sanex in Melbourne. Yeah. And this is a snake and spider and bite. spider, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's got the tourniquet, the bandage, and also one of these timber-style... Lance things. Lancer there. kits. That, that one's all unopened. The instructions are in oh, perfect yeah. condition on that one. So the lance kit's in there. Yeah. OK, a little stick there to wind the tourniquet up. Yeah, from there we go into the more budget-conscious kits, I suppose <laughs> yes. you'd call them. And these were fairly small and basic. The same method once again, but you got your instructions. Okay. And all you really got was a, an old style razor blade okay. that you find in a scraper. Yeah, and there would have been some uh, Condi's crystals. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, little, this is that. A little plastic cover for your razor blade, and I that would have been that's it. That's all you need, really, yeah, isn't it? Just a, Cut it and you would have used your own tourniquet, a bit of rope or shoelace or yeah. something similar. Yeah, so that was for snake and spider bite because it was the same method for a lot of spider bites. Same brand again, Haven, but just a different model. Okay. Yeah. And then we uh, go into some other kits which were a bit more unusual. We go into Dr. Chase's Snake Bite Cure. Yeah. Okay, which yeah, don't really have a lot of information on this Dr. Chase fella, trying to find out a bit about him, but potion or concoction that he would have probably carted around and sold in different towns to uh, make a few bob. Make a few bob, yeah, like the old elixirs and things that cured everything. Yeah, yeah so uh, <laughs> would have been an interesting one, but yeah, hard to get any information on that kit. I'll open him up and you're going to see. Okay. <laughs> the, the label, old okay. cork bottle, unopened. Lovely. 
And he, who'd want to open it? Yeah, the <laughs> instructions were a bit more in, in depth. Yeah. And a bigger pamphlet, which was nice. It'd be nice to get this blown up and, and framed or something too. Oh, nice. So yeah, these are old medicines where the doctors sort of made their own thing up and sold it around the place. But Australian, once again, I think this one was made, the, the, made These Melbourne, are back in the days before insurance ruined everything, eh? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> A lot of time they demonstrated their um, their product on themselves yeah. to prove it worked, and then they'd sell a lot more. But I think they were the days when they used to let a snake bite them that they'd pull the fangs out of, or oh, okay, yeah. so there was no venom actually injected. And Although then, I did hear that some people, you know, you can become immune to certain snake bites, yeah, and build up an immunity over time, and these guys would sell. Uh, using a demonstration of the one they're actually immune to, so... <laughs> yeah, that'd be right. I suppose you would, you'd sell a lot, wouldn't you, if people thought it worked? That's in right. Day. So that's quite an interesting one, Australian. And then we uh, sort of go to the oldest Australian ones that I've got, although I don't know a date on that, Dr Chase. Yeah, yeah. This one here is the old, oldest one that I've got in the late 1800s. This method was basically a syringe, a bottle of strychnine. <laughs> strychnine, yeah. So yeah, they would have actually in, drawn that up into the syringe and injected it into the bite site, and done that several times until either the patient uh, recovered or died from either snake bite <laughs> <Yeah>. or strychnine. <laughs> but yeah, uh, here's a local one. Once again, that's uh, some stickers in the back here that of the chemist in Launceston where this was probably sold. A good old Tessie kit. Yeah. Uh, some, some nice no old date labels there. Uh, no date there that I can see. Uh, but yeah, they're, certainly old. they're dated from from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Hmm. But yeah, you wouldn't uh, want to be stuck by those, I don't reckon. <laughs> no. It would be an interesting method. So yeah, probably the oldest one that I have, until we find out about Dr. Chase when his one was produced. Yeah. Uh, from there, we sort of go into ones from other countries. Oh, well, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, this one here was uh, from Sri Lanka. And it was basically what they call a snake stone. <laughs> Sat the stone itself over the bite, the snake bite which was supposed to, I believe, draw the poison out. Yeah. Once again, comes with their instructions telling you how to do the method. Uh, so, so it says make sure you get the exact spot of snake bites if you miss it somehow. <laughs> Cut the X in. Broken um, glass or a uh, yeah, blade? Yeah, a pointed knife or a piece of glass <laughs> till the blood uh, so the drop of blood is out. I don't know if any oil or substance is being applied, wash it off. Okay, that's strange, isn't it? Strange instructions. And then it sort of says apply the stone. It may be attached to the wound for two or three hours, sometimes the whole day. The stone does not stick rarely. Bandages may be used. But it's interesting, you keep it on until the stone drops off. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It is. The stone yeah. may fall off either because there's no more poison or because it's been saturated. So yeah, that sucks up poison somehow. <laughs> An interesting who uh, put the kit out. Yeah, yeah. So, some church guy by the looks of it. Yeah. Is that Father uh, mean Friar? Or what uh, it mean? means Father. Father. Oh, uh, Reverend, Reverend Father. Father. Yeah, so, Cyril. Yeah. <laughs> So no Father way, Cyril put this out. Producing snake bite kits. <laughs> in Sri Lanka, eh? With all the Sri Lankan instructions there. Dear, yeah, dear. And doesn't Sri Lanka have the highest death rate in the world for snake? It does. Sure <laughs> does. Yeah. But I, mean, I, wonder what time, I wonder how old that one is. Yeah, I don't have much information on that one either. Exactly but, so. uh, just interesting kits. I picked that up in Tasmania, believe it or not. Somebody must have brought it over with them as a souvenir or maybe someone from the area brought it with them thinking it would help them against snake bite in Tasmania, who knows. 
But from there we go to snake bite kits from America. Did you want to do those or? Uh, yeah, well, these ones are old, so yeah, very antique. Yeah, we sort of go into a similar method where they they used a plunger, but they used a rubber plunger yeah. to suction onto the bite side. You still buy them at Walmart today. Yeah, right. It's something similar anyway. Yeah, the usual instructions tucked away in there. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, looks like there's just a scalpel blade. What's that? That'd be the disinfectant and stuff, would it? More than likely, yeah. Yeah. And once again, they sort of came in to just different shapes and mm. different brands. But made especially for it. It says they're Tata State Kit, so you know, these are purposely built. And a razor blade there, looked quite nasty as well. But it's interesting, it's like, um, yeah, a lot of the time it'd be people's fears and phobias would make them fork out for this sort of stuff. So, I mean, there's definitely a market there. Yeah. Well, it still is today, like you say. They're oh, still, yeah, yeah, they're still making. You know, like our snake bite kits now are but completely these, different. But these, America's these... still using the same sort of method, aren't they? Yeah, but these, um, these aren't something that's adapted from anything else. It's especially purposely made for snake bite. Yeah. That's all right, we'll put it back together in a minute. So I think it had to be rolled fairly tight. Yeah. And then they go to these U Butte oh. <laughs> setups, which look a bit odd. They do. You know, the same sort of thing suction. Oh, well, at least there's a bit of a suction thing happening there. Yeah. And once again, in, in these kits, you've got the typical tourniquet rubber yep. tubing and you would have had the razor blade again, yeah, old yeah. old coaster razor blade. It's yeah. interesting that when <clears throat> when you look at books like snake books and stuff from America, they don't mention much about what happens with it. <clears throat> when you get bitten by a snake. That is, it's very hard to find information on it. Right. I often wonder if it's because people are frightened of getting sued, but any book in Australia will give you the whole, this is the first aid you do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but ours is pretty tried and true and works very well. I can't imagine a lot of these things working that well. No, it'd be quite hard to use, and like I said, how successful people would be at using them would be another thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, today, in Australia anyway, we go for these yep. bandage style kits. Which is, you know, all you need, two bandages. Yeah, that's basically it, isn't it? And, uh, yeah. This is another old tin called Pambo, first aid snake bite outfit. Outfit three and six, it cost in the day. No real details with it, and once again, I haven't been able to track down anything about it. So it'd be nice to find out a bit more about that one. A fairly large tin, it must have had a fair bit of yeah, gear yeah. in it. So. Would have had probably one of these in, maybe, who knows? Yeah. By the name of it, too, it might have been something, although it looks a bit too professional, but Pambo almost sounds like a, a snake man or something, doesn't it? Like a, <laughs> you know, like, as if possibly. Something like oh, that. Thanks for showing me this. This is a pretty amazing antique snake yeah. bike kits. No, they are interesting items. Um, you don't see them a lot. You see, these ones are relatively common. A lot of people have seen these plastic ones, but yeah, once you get into the timber and the steel and anything in these old tins, you know, the old kits, yeah. yeah, they're fairly collectible and hard to come by. Mm. Can you get a lot of this from markets and places like this? Yeah, markets, antique shops, yeah, off the eBay sometimes. Okay. But to find these ones is very hard. I've never found been able to find another one of these old syringe style ones, mm. so um, fairly collectible to find them. But yeah, bit of history. It's <laughs> brilliant, in thanks some, a lot. And something we're both interested in, snakes. Yeah. Okay, now let's hope we never have to use any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely.